Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for coming to our Sunday seminar today. We're so very glad to have you here. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce Alyssa Chinesky from the Community Food Bank in New Jersey. And she's going to lead us today in a discussion about fiber. So um, without further ado, I'll hand it over to you, Alyssa. Thanks for having me. <laughs> As Michelle mentioned, we're going to be talking about fiber, so kind of getting a deeper dive into it because we've mentioned it a couple of times in the previous lessons that we were talking about. So I thought we were a little interested in it, might as well do a little bit on it. This is our injustice cross statement. You've seen this too in here. It just states that we're, we don't discriminate based on any part of your identity, other than we're an equal opportunity organization. And welcome. So as Michelle mentioned, I'm from the Community Food Bank of New Jersey SNAP Ed program, and I'm a nutrition educator with the SNAP Ed program. So nice to meet you if you haven't been here. Um, if you have, thanks for joining again. This is our Just Day of the Fruits and Vegetables program. So it helps you to increase your fruit and vegetable consumption and um, your physical activity as well. And there's a little agenda for today, so you know what's going on. We're going to have a lesson on fiber. We're also going to have an activity to practice which foods we think have more fiber in them and see which ones we can go for. We'll have a recipe video and a physical activity video, like usual. Very simple, not going to be the time around. Um, and then get questions and answers throughout. So if you have any questions, feel free to stop me and go ahead and ask or any comments before. To start out, we have our first little icebreaker. So what has anybody heard about fiber? You can answer any of these, all of these. Also, do you hear anything about fiber in advertisements, TV, or for friends and family? And what do you think are some of the benefits? So does anybody have any thoughts on any of those questions? Heart health. Car health, very nice. Anything else? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it helps with a lot of different chronic diseases, especially with uh, elimination. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good. Anyway, and have you seen anything like in TV advertisements that are based around fiber? I don't know if anybody's ever seen it. I think mostly we think of like commercials where they're like to get fiber supplements and things like that, right? And, yeah. High fiber cereals and breads. Yeah, things like that, right? Mm -hmm. the fiber ones and things that are, you know, labeled to have extra fiber in them, right? So we'll see kind of like why there are products made for that and why people make a big deal about fiber, but also why it's so good for you and why we want to kind of add more to our diet. Um, so let's look at the next one. So some benefits of fiber, right? as we mentioned, it's going to help you with a few different kinds of chronic um, diseases and prevention. It also is really great for lowering your blood pressure. It's good for um, blood sugar as well. So I always recommend that people who are pre-diabetic or have diabetes to kind of focus on fiber, especially if they're consuming any type of sugar. So it's going to help to slow that spike in blood sugar. And then also cholesterol is going to help control your cholesterol as well. Um, and all the absorption of sugar and cholesterol into your blood. So it helps now your blood pressure as well as that. Um, it also helps your digestive tract. So we mentioned that um, it's going to help you to go to the bathroom. It's going to help with your bowel movement, which is really important because, you know, don't want to be up, it's definitely going to make a big difference for your health um, in many different ways. Typically, it can even help you so that you um, don't overeat, and then that can help with other types of chronic um, diseases like overweight or obesity to make sure that you're not having too much. Um, and when you feel more satisfied, you tend to not overeat as well. So this can be really helpful to you know control your weight and maintain a healthy weight. Um, 
Does anybody think they know what the recommended intake of fiber is for an adult? Like 25 grams. You got it. Nice. Yeah. So you can go to the next slide, Michelle. <laughs> awesome. Good job. So the recommended intake for the day for an adult is 25 grams of fiber. So I came, I came up with a couple of little ideas of what that might look like in a day, but this will look totally different depending on the food that you eat. So it might look like 100 grams of oats, half a cup of cooked beans, a kiwi and an orange, or it could look like one cup of cooked split peas and a cup of blackberries. But it really depends on the type of food that you're picking um, because the fiber can add up in a lot of different ways. So these are just some quick swaps you can make in order to add a little bit more fiber to your diet. So maybe instead of going for like a white bagel and you can go for a bowl of oatmeal instead. Maybe instead of going for the potato chips, then you can go for some almonds or other types of nuts or seeds. And then finally, instead of going for white rice, you can go for brown rice, but that's going to be a whole grain. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. The whole grains are going to have more fiber and allow you to digest them a little bit better. So um, we'll go specifically with whole grains as well. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments before we move on? Okay. So which foods do have fiber? We obviously want to know if we're trying to make some nice, um, healthy swaps. What can we go for? What's gonna you're gonna notice with um, fiber is that you're gonna get fiber from your plant foods. So things like fruits, vegetables, beans, nuts, seeds, and whole grains are all gonna be your plant foods. On the other hand, um, animal foods so like meat, chicken, fish, eggs, and milk don't have fiber in them. So you want to make sure that you're adding in different sources of plant proteins, and um, you can use some plant milks as well, but those won't really add any fiber to your diet, more things like nuts and seeds are going to add different um, sources of fiber to your diet. So um, something that's really great is to swap out, for example, like a source of meat protein for a source of plant protein a couple times a week. It can be an easy switch and something that you can kind of, you know, add to a meal that you typically would have your meats, um, but instead choose something like extra veggies and then um, another source of protein like nuts, maybe add that to your salad. And that'll give you a little bit more extra fiber in the meals that you already eat. And so speaking of whole grains, because um, this is a, a big thing, a big swap that you can make that can be pretty simple so long as you know which grains to look for. So when it comes to whole grains, whole grains are going to be in two subgroups. So there's going to be refined grains and there's going to be whole grains. Um, whole grains contain the entire seed of the plant. So you can picture wheat growing in a field, they pick it and they process it and that whole seed is gonna go into your bread. So when you go to the store, you're getting the entire seed that's made into your bread in that whole grain flour. Refined grains are gonna be the ones that are processed a little more. So they're milled and then that is going to give them a different texture, a longer shelf life, so for example, white bread is going to be, have a longer shelf life than your whole wheat bread, but also they're taking out different parts of the seed. So you're going to have a, um, the three parts of the seed for a whole grain are bran, the germ, and the endosperm. And when they turn your grain into a refined grain, they take out the bran and they take out the germ. So the important thing about the bran and the germ, the bran is like the outer shell. It's kind of like, if you, it looks like an egg almost. You can think of it as a shell, but the bran has fiber, it's going to have um, vitamins, and it's going to be really great, especially for that digestion, because there's lots of fiber in that shell. The um, germ on the inside, this contains healthy fats and antioxidants, which are also really good for feeling fuller for longer, because healthy fats really help you to stay fuller for longer as well. So we're going to want those parts of the seed in our flour, and rather than taking them out. Um, the endosperm is good, it has protein, it has that, those carbs you're looking for for energy, but it's not going to give you everything that you need. So it's better to get that full whole grain if we can. So that's why we want to lean on our whole grain whenever possible and go for a whole grain bread rather than a white bread or brown rice rather than a white bread. Um, and of course, what use is it to know that you want whole grain, um, a whole grain if you don't know how to find it? So um, have I ever mentioned how to find one yet? I don't know if anyone remembers if I have. No. Exactly. Yeah. So in the ingredients, you want to find it in the first ingredient. So 
You want that word whole. Say you're looking for a red if you see the word whole as that first ingredient. And that's going to be a really good sign that you're getting the whole grain. And that's because um, the ingredients are in a certain order on that list. They go from the heaviest ingredient to the lightest ingredient. So you're going to want the first ingredient to be a whole grain flour or whole grain oats or whole wheat, because then that, that tells you that most of that product is getting that flour and rather than getting it as a third ingredient, and it's not really taking up much of your product. So we want to make sure that we're getting that whole grain as of a primary ingredient in the bread that you're having for cereal. Yes. Why do they uh, take all the good things out and sell white bread and set? Well, yeah, that's typically because when you take that out, it's going to do a different texture. Maybe it's for the color. Maybe it's for the shelf life. And, you know, people don't recognize that that's what you're taking out. And it's easier for the company, especially with a shelf life that's longer. And they don't have to keep your stocking out soon, probably saving some money on it. Um, and then also when people start to like the product, they keep buying it, you know. But um, it's definitely better to go for the other kinds if you can because um, they typically don't taste that much different, you know. I don't think it's worth, worth losing all the, the good things. Yeah, right. But yeah, typically it's because of the, the companies, you know, trying to create a certain product for you. The second. And I guess also they sell the brand separately and make more money. Is that it? Um, I've actually never looked into that. I'm not sure which companies would do that. So I'm not sure that's looking to me. I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. Any other questions? So, again, when we're looking at the store, it's always really good to know. How to find those whole grains. Um, and this one is just telling you to be careful about what you're looking at. So sometimes when you're getting um, a bread, it'll say those, you know, those keywords that you're looking at that make you think, oh, healthy, good for you, but they can be a little bit deceiving. So for example, multi-grain and 12 grain or eight grain, whatever it is that you see, that doesn't really mean that you're getting whole grains. So you want to be careful. Um, they can just be things that are trying to catch your eye. And, and, and all marketing is the same. They want to make sure that you, you know, like it when you look at it, you look at the package and you want to buy it. Um, but you always want to lean on that ingredients list if you really are not sure because those words don't really mean much. They can, you know, have certain types of grains in there and make it a multi-grain because they have like two different kinds of grains. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's a whole grain. So I would say always check the ingredients list if you can. Something else that's a key um, indicator that you're getting a whole grain is if the front of the package says 100% whole, then you're going to know that's a whole grain because they're not allowed to put that on there unless it actually is a whole grain. So if you're not really sure, maybe the ingredients are confusing you. If it says 100% on the front, then that's a good thing. Also, you might see this little whole grain seal on there. That's another thing that they put on your whole grain as well. And this was a video. I think I sent her a video as well. Yeah. The video I sent her isn't as fun or cute, but hopefully it gets the point across. Um, this one wouldn't send you know, to her. So. Uh, this one? This is a little whole grain experiment. It's going to show you how the bread digests. <laughs> um, it's going to tell you how the bread digests in your system. Just give you a little idea of the difference between whole, whole grain milk and refined. Hi, my name is Debbie, and today we're going to talk about the glycemic index. And I'm not just going to talk about what the definition is, it's a buzzword that has been around for a while now. I'm going to show you a little experiment with some white, highly processed bread and some whole grain, hearty, whole wheat bread. And how these two actually affect your blood sugar and when you eat them, what happens in your body. So let's start with the white bread. I just have a container here of a little bit of water and I'm just gonna put the white bread in on one side and then I'm gonna flip it over. Water represents like your stomach. And then I'm just gonna try and pick it up. And what happens is it's just totally falling apart. 
and it just becomes almost gluish. And this is what happens in your stomach. When you eat highly processed foods, they become mush like this and they get into your bloodstream very quickly. So that means that white bread has a very high glycemic index because it gets into the bloodstream very quickly. So now I'm just gonna dump that out, put a little bit more water in for the next piece. And we're gonna do the same thing with that. So here's our piece of whole grain, whole wheat bread. Same thing, I'm just gonna set it in there and I'll even leave it in there a little bit longer. Turn it over. And you can actually lift up this whole piece of bread by itself. It's still intact. You can even kind of wring it out like that. And it's still intact. So this is why when you're eating something low glycemic, it stays in your body longer. It's takes longer to process. So it doesn't spike your blood sugar as quick as the high glycemic white bread. So after watching this video, I hope you understand a little bit more so about the like different types of foods that affects our body. The bread's actually going through your system and really how the fibers work because that's what's keeping it together and that's what's keeping the whole grain intact. Um, and that way your body's breaking down those grains slower and using the energy over a longer period of time. Um, that's why you definitely feel fuller for longer if you're having a whole grain rather than having, for example, like a donut made from like white flour or having something like a cookie um, that's going to break down really quickly in your body and it's going to use up that energy as quickly as possible and then it's going to spike your blood sugar up and give you that sugar rush, right? Um, so that's where we're getting that fiber in and you can use it for a longer period of time and feel fuller for longer. Any questions about that? Make sense? Yeah. Um, also, so where do we find fiber? We want to be able to check it on the ingredients label because we're trying to get that 25 grams a day. Um, but how do you know if you're getting the 25 grams a day? So when we're taking a look at our ingredients label, we can look right under the carbohydrates and it's going to give you your uh, dietary fiber. When we're looking at that dietary fiber, um, you can look at the grams, so that'll tell you in a serving how many grams you're getting of that, of that um, 25 recommended. You can also take a look at the percent daily value. So if you were here last time, we talked about that a little bit. But this just tells you what amount of the recommendation are you getting from this food. So for this one specifically, you're getting 14%, which is pretty good if you're getting a good amount of your fiber for the day. Um, if you are getting 20% or higher of any type of ingredient, or any type of um, part of the um, nutrition facts label, that's gonna mean you're getting high amount of it. So say you're getting 22% of your fiber for the day, that's gonna be a, a food that's high in fiber. If you're getting 5% or lower, that's gonna be kind of low in fiber in comparison to other foods. So if you are really trying to up your um, fiber intake, you can look for those foods that are around 20% to try to get a little bit more and maybe trade out a food that has, for example, a 2%, for one that has a little bit more percentage on that label, and then you'll know that you're going to be getting a little bit more. And this is something you can also use, for example, with other things that you're trying to limit. So if you're trying to limit your sugars, trying to limit your fats, or anything that you know you're specifically looking at for your health, you can look at that percent daily value and go by that five percent or lower is low, twenty percent or higher is high. So we can help you with some other things as well. Now we have our little activity to practice. Um, what's gonna happen is there's gonna be five different foods that you might commonly see, and um, we're actually going to rank them. So you're gonna see which one do you think has the lowest in fiber and go in order. And um, there's gonna be two options. So you can try to do it without the options and then you can do it with the options if you'd like to, but um, it's not super hard. <laughs> so once I you can click the button. So we have these five foods and you want to put them in order from least amount of fiber to most amount of fiber. And um, you can take a moment and just think about it first. And then if anybody wants to give a guess, we could, but then there's also options as well. So if you're not sure, give a guess. Probably black beans. Okay. Good, good, good. 
to the mac and cheese they can do a little like hmm, which one would it be <laughs> you know um we do have some options i think it'll give it away so there's option a which is the next slide that would be the order of option a <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it's from least to most and then this option b would be this one so what do we think is it a or b b, b. yes okay perfect we're gonna go through each of these choice piece correct so um you guys should go to the next one there's going to be a slide for each so first we're going to talk about our puppy so these fruit snacks um they are made from real fruit juice which sounds really great but actually when you're getting your fruits all of that fiber is going to be coming from your whole fruit so you're going to get a lot of fiber from the peel and from the body of the fruit and that's why you really want to try to focus on whole fruits i know when you're getting these gummies you're going to get fruit juice you're also going to get some added sugar most likely you're not going to get um but any fiber at all so if you can go for those whole fruits that's a great option because this actually wouldn't count as you're serving fruit for the day so sadly um mm -hmm. but going for those whole fruits and vegetables is going to be a really great idea to make sure that you get lots of fiber next up is the mac and cheese so when it came to this mac and cheese you are getting a more processed version of pasta you're going to be getting a white pasta rather than a whole grain pasta um, I believe they do make the whole grain version. So maybe if you are getting the mac and cheese and you want to make it a little bit, you know, higher fiber option, you can go for the whole grain version. Or even better, I would say try to make it at home and, um, you know, do a whole grain pasta and maybe add your own cheese so that you can, you know, have more control. The more that you make things at home, you can have more control over the food that you're having and you can always have more control over your health as well. So you can limit those processed foods and then go for your own version and even adding some veggies would be a great idea to add even more fiber and color to your plate. Next up, we have the Fruit Loops, which may be surprising because Fruit Loops, you'd think, are right in the middle. That would be a surprising thing. They are made with whole grain. However, if we take a close look at the ingredients, which you really can't see because they're super tiny, the first ingredient here is sugar. And we learned about that order of ingredients that that's not really a good sign because sugar is going to be taking up a lot of the product that is the heaviest ingredient. So although you are getting some whole grains here, you're also getting a whole lot of sugar. So we want to be careful about how much we have with that. Be mindful of your portion. You can have this once in a while, but maybe once in a while is good. So I'll have it, you know, every day or have two bowls every day, right? So, you know, just being mindful, having in moderation um, when you have it. Next up, we have some peas. So um, like we mentioned, your fruits and your veggies are gonna have more fiber in them and peas are a good option. So these ones are going to give you four grams of fiber per serving and that's about 14%. So that's going up pretty well. Um, if you are using those canned products, so remember you can either go for low or no sodium, which you'll see it, or lower or no, no salt is the same thing. Um, you'll see that on the label. And um, those ones are going to have a little bit less salt, which is good for prevention of any types of like high blood pressure. Um, but also say you can't find any versions like that, you can rinse them out so that they don't have too much excess sodium in there. Um, and you can, you know, take some out. You want to exactly feel, they'll, they'll take a little bit more salt out. And then finally, so our winner is the black beans. And we knew that because they are a great um, source of fiber. And a really good thing about beans is that they're the only food that is a protein and a vegetable and they're in both groups. Um, so say you are going for a plant protein, this is a great option in order to up your fiber intake as well. There's another note right there. If you're using dried beans, just make sure that you soak them and pre-cook them to plan ahead because it can take a long time to cook your beans. Um, but this is a really great source of fiber. And we know that because the percent daily value up there is 23%. So you're getting about a quarter of the amount of fiber that you need in just a half a cup of black bean, which is pretty great, right? Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions about that? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so a lot of the items that were shown 
um, are pre-packaged and processed. But when you buy things like berries and um, lettuces and, and things of that nature, you don't, I don't think it's looking on the package yeah. about what the fiber content is or serving size. So yeah. Is there an easy way? So typically, hopefully, if you have any type of like access, you can kind of look that up and just see what's the fiber content of a serving of like strawberries, for example. Um, and typically, you'll be able to find that pretty easily. And then you can know what the serving of strawberries is this much, which would be um, useful. Um, I'm trying to think, I wonder if, does anybody else have any other tips of how you find it if you weren't able to search it up? I think it would be hard. That's typically what I would do. Definitely. Um, my, my best tip, hopefully, people have access to look it up. I don't think it's just going to be. Another question. Um, so, I, I like spinach. Mm -hmm. and was wondering does cooking the spinach degrade the fiber? Um, that is the question. Do you know? Since you're a nurse, <laughs> you're not supposed to have any day that was supposed to have wrong. Okay, so you know. Okay, there you go. Thank you. I do have a book I recommend. It's called Diabetes is Alive. Okay. It's called on Amazon. I never heard of Diabetes is Alive. I have it in my bag. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 100 years of research. Wow. That's interesting. Actually, I would be interested so I know it's going to be so. The big diabetes, <laughs> it's called the big diabetes lie. Okay. Oh, I'm going to write that down after this. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so a little bit of last notes. This is just kind of a little recap, and then we're going to have our recipe video and our physical activity video, which is going to be speeded activity just as usual. So um, don't worry. Um, and so remember, we have learned a lot about fiber today. So we can remember as some closing point, fiber is only found in those plant foods. So go for fruits, vegetables, beans, nuts, seeds, and whole grains. Try to eat fruits and vegetables in their full forms if you can, so you can get peeled in the body of them. Um, most fiber is in the skin of those fruits and vegetables, like I mentioned. So um, make sure that you wash them before for food safety, of course, um, but definitely utilize them. Look for whole grains by searching for whole as the first ingredient, and you need 25 of grams of fiber. Well, that's the average recommendation. Remember, if you have a different recommendation, always check with your doctor. But you need about 25 grams of fiber a day for an average adult to get the amount of fiber that you um, need in your diet. And then you can add lots of fiber and protein to your diet with beans, of course, which are a great option. Um, and if anybody has any more questions, please let me know. But if not, we have our fun videos that we're going to go through. Oh, okay. Yeah, let me let them in. I don't know why I can't put the volume any higher. Well, it's not be better. Well, it's going to be making um, a Welcome back. I'm here with Alisa again from the Food Bank of the Southern Tier, part of the Just Say Yes to Fruits and Veggies program. We've got another great dish to show you guys today. So what are we working on? We are doing a sweet potato chili. Yummy. A little new take on chili. Yeah. It is meatless, but you can always add meat. Sure. Okay. So we've got the sweet potato. We've got all sorts of good things over here. Yep. Okay. We're using the Instant Pot. Yes. So if this is your first go with the Instant Pot, it's, it's a pretty powerful tool. Okay. We're going to put it on saute mode, just like that. Okay. And, and could then, you do this, I'm sorry, even yep. with 
a regular pot oh or my a gosh. crock pot or yeah. something, obviously. So you could obviously. do this on the stove. You could do this in a crock pot. You just want to probably saute the onions to start. Okay. But you don't have to. I mean, you could do this however you want, okay. truly. Let's grab those onions. Okay. This says on, hopefully. Yes, it does. <laughs> so we're going to do olive oil on the bottom. I usually do a tablespoon or two. Okay. Go ahead and pour those in. That's one red onion. This thing was making me cry as yeah. I was cutting it. I'm also going to add garlic to this. Okay. Let's do like a teaspoon. That's what I'm thinking. But for reference, if you cheat and you get the chopped garlic, half a teaspoon is a clove. So okay. I'm using two cloves. <laughs> So the next step is, let's add those peppers. Okay. This is two small bell peppers. You could use one large one, mm -hmm. you could use green, yellow. Yes, I always like to mix it up. If I do chili, you get a little bit of, oh, yeah. you know, the sweet and the orange or the yellow and then. All about the color. Yeah. As we uh, add each one, pop a color in each, so that tells you a lot of nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, the sweet potato is full of vitamin A and vitamin C. And then you get your protein from the beans. Right, absolutely. Next, let's add those sweet potatoes. This is two, I would say medium-sized sweet potatoes. Now, we are going to do spices. Okay. Cumin. I'm going to have you measure two teaspoons. There's your teaspoon. There's like one. Mm -hmm. Two. There you nice. go. Mm -hmm. And chili powder is the next one. Okay. This is a tablespoon and a half. I'm going to keep stirring this so we don't get anything burned on the bottom. Nice. And spices with chili, I feel like you can throw so many other spices in here too. Oh, I'm yeah. Sure. You could do paprika in here. Mm -hmm. How about you salt and pepper this? Okay. Nice. Okay. Mm. Looks good. Mm. And those tomatoes over there. So a can, this is okay. a 28 ounce can. Yes, of the crushed, uh, crushed, right, you were saying. You could use crushed or dice. Okay. This is just what I had. Okay, nice. The last thing we add is the kidney beans. Okay. Because they're already soft, mm -hmm. we don't want to overcook them since they already cooked. These are canned and it's a I full can. I was gonna can. ask you how you feel. I yeah. normally use canned. All right. The last thing is Add just a little bit of water or vegetable stock. Okay. My kind of rule of thumb is I just add it so that the line of liquid is mm. almost to the top. Okay. The last part is we switch this thing to slow cook. Okay. You can put on high or low. I put mm. on high for maybe an hour or two. Okay. Once everything is soft, it's done. Great. So once those sweet potatoes, you can poke them. It's good. If you were to cook this on the stove, it would be faster. Mm -hmm. um, Great. Hear that little yeah. sound? Yeah. It's a good sound. <laughs> it means you put the top on right. So once it's all done cooking, mm -hmm. then it's product. Product. Look so about like. an hour in that slow cooker. Yep. And maybe a little bit less uh, on the stove. Less on the stove, mm. yeah. And so this uh, recipe and a bunch of other recipes that you guys do are obviously you uh, have them up online. We're going to have this one on our website, but you also have some social media too as well. Yeah, we just updated our Pinterest page. We're really excited about it. Great. Okay. Yeah. Definitely check this one out. Mm. Really, really good. Yeah. Um, but we will have this over for you on our website, wbny.com. <laughs> They are on a just day of mm -hmm. website, and there's over 200 recipes on there. So if you ever want to check them out, the thing I like about that recipe is that it's using beans as your protein, so you're getting that plant source protein, and lots of different colors and veggies mm -hmm. are included. So definitely a great meal to try if you want to do something mm -hmm. more hearty, just made of vegetables and um, okay. nutrients in there. Dynamite. Yeah. The recipe was good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, if you want to give yourself some space, you could. This is going to be chair dancing. So hopefully, mm -hmm. it's fun. I don't wake you up. <laughs> um, and feel free when we're doing any type of physical activity, just as I always say, you know, do what you feel comfortable with. If you feel any types of aches or pain, feel free to stop. Um, it's all about your own body. So do what feels good. Um, but hopefully, it's a little fun and wakes you up a little bit. And um, this is the last thing we have, so.
Anyway, this was nice and fun. We had fun putting it together. I have Nishi here with me. Let's go. Tap. Clap, clap. Open. Good. All right, we're going to keep the hands the same. We're going to change the feet. Take it out. Four. Good, good. Open. All right, we're going to have a change here. Rock. Good. Up, then down. Rock. Up, down. Shine. Good, nice and smooth. Rock it out. And up. We're going to start from the top. Good. Once again, we're going to change that leg motion to open and close. Open. Strong. All right, we're gonna rock it out. Take it up, up and down. Rock. Good, shine. Rock it out. Up. We're gonna have a change here. Roll it over. Cut. Good. Roll. Rock it out. Good, here we go. Stop it. Pep. Stop that foot. Keep it going. All right, we're going to have that gentle sway from the top. Good. Nice and easy. We're going to let it shine up and over. Four. Three. Back to the hook. Rock it out. And up and down. Good. Shine it out. Rock it out. Roll it over. Hey, I am so excited to announce that Chair One Fitness is finally offering on-demand workouts just for you. We have a variety of music and I didn't expect you to do that today. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Yeah. 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 But definitely, you know, adding a little bit of physical activity every day, it adds up. So um, the recommendation for adults is about 30 minutes, five times a week. And that was four minutes right there. And so you do something little every bit or throughout the day. Maybe you walk instead of, you know, taking the, the bus or something. Or maybe you park a little bit further from the grocery store or clean the house for 20 minutes. It's all going to add up. So this is a fun little way to do that. But um. Anything you do that's movement is going to count. So um, this is one example. <laughs> Otherwise, that's actually all I have for you today. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for joining. And if you do have any more questions, please let me know. Um, and that link to the video, I'm going to resend to. I know Michelle has very easy to send it out. So if anyone wants to do it again, um, you can do it. It's so cute. Oh good. Yes, I always have a class. Yes. <laughs> I, I do chair yoga, sometimes chair dancing. It's a lot of fun. I've done chair ads with people. So there's a lot of them. Definitely take a look. There's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a great time. <laughs> yeah. Thank you.
so much for all joining and for being great. <laughs> What else do we active? Yeah, thank you uh, again to Alyssa for the seminar. We really appreciate um, everything she's taught us over the past three sessions. Uh, we're very lucky uh, to have had you. Um, and thank you all again for coming to our Sunday seminar. I um, <laughs> uh, I don't know when our next one will be, but I will I'll keep you posted hopefully in January or February. Um, but in the meantime, there are lots of other activities going on at our church. If you want to come, we have a jazz vespers service on next Saturday, um, the 18th. Um, we have our children's Christmas pageant is on the 19th. We have a Christmas Eve service at the church. So um, feel free to come and join us for any and all of these things. And finally, on your way out, you'll see there's a table full of water bottles. Please, please take one. We have so many. <laughs> um, help to keep uh, your water intake uh, hot, high throughout the day. Um, so thank you again, and hope you all have a wonderful week. Thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Yeah,